A very good morning out there. Welcome to another beautiful live broadcast. My name is Isa Phillips Akintala. It's an honor and a great privilege this morning to share the platform with you, to invite you to join me this morning as we continue to press into the mind of the Lord. This is a day where the Spirit of God is revealing His intentions and direction to us. We are picking frequencies from different uh, dimensions in the Spirit that is speaking to this glorious day of redemption. This is the day where the Spirit of God is bringing us further into the heart, yes, of this new day. We are pressing towards the days of the end. And as we get closer to us, that reality of the unveiling of Christ, it is my prayer that we'll continue to listen carefully and allow the Spirit of God to guide our heart and to lead us to the place of the good pleasure of the Father. There are several things the Spirit of God is unpacking. There are several, you know, manifestations and realities that we need to understand as we step further into this season. And so I pray that as we continue to look into the principles and the values that heaven as ordained and is revealing to us, of course, show, showing us via the word and of course via the express, you know, speakings of God, that our heart will align and we will adjust, all right, even to that which the Lord is doing. This morning, once again, I will continue to look into the principle of coming out of the ark, engaging the new day. And we're going to be dealing with Abraham this morning and some, uh, excuse me, there are some dynamics in Abraham that I hope that we'll be able to look into that will speak into how we need to adjust our life and adjust, amen, that which the Spirit of God is demanding for this brand new day. So I want to welcome you, everyone joining us this morning, wherever you're joining from. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I, I started a bit late this morning. And you know how it is someday, you know, you wake up and you just need to do other things. But thank God that I'm here this morning. Welcome, Sister Dioni. Welcome, Brother Derek. And I see somebody else joining us. Welcome. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. We want to thank God for another beautiful, glorious day. Well, it's raining here in Franjouk. The weather is a bit cold this morning. But we thank God for this beautiful weather. We thank God that, you know, the Spirit of God is doing something new, even in our city, in our nation, in our community. And we'll continue to stand and believe God for great things, even in our nation, in our city. We'll continue to pray for uh, those in leadership. We'll continue to pray for Syria Maposa. We want to believe that God will continue to infuse his mind with the spirit of wisdom and excellence, that he'll be able to have the spiritual resolve and the capacity to be able to make the right decision that needs to be made. We are in a day where decisions need to be made and they need to be made in, this, in the spirit of excellence, in the spirit of truth, and of course in the spirit of courage. Because whenever we make decisions, we will, we will be challenging, amen, the status quo. And I believe that there are certain decisions that need to be made in, the, in this nation regarding the advancement of the people of God. Well, you may not hear me properly, and that's because it's raining. Well, my studio here is not soundproof, so uh, uh, pardon me if you're not hearing me properly, but I'm trying my best to give you, you know, a, you know, the best of quality of sound. So thank you so much. Let us pray this morning, even as we begin this brownie day. Father, we want to thank you. Thank you for granting us this great day. Thank you for once again giving us the privilege to be alive. But not just to be alive, but to be alive in you. It's an honor, Father. We thank you. We celebrate your voice upon our life. Yes, though the situations out there may be rough and tough and sometimes discouraging, but we, 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 we hear your voice, oh God. We hear that which you're saying. You said you're going to bring us through this. You said though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we are walking through it. We understand, oh God, that yes, even in transition, that we'll have to go through wilderness experience we're going through them by the time we come out on the other side we are better ready and prepared to engage so we thank you we know that all things are working together for our good because we love you because we love you and that love is not just based on our action that love is because you have infused your spirit in us to be able to love you there is nothing we can do of our own strength of our own grace without you empowering us so we thank you for your holy spirit this morning that has empowered us again to be able to say i love you god i love you father 
Father. Thank you. You are the one that enables us, that quicken us. You are the one, oh God, infusing your very life in us in this brand new day. We thank you. We worship you. We exalt your holy name. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here this morning. Thank you for what you're doing across the nations, across the board, within your church. Thank you, Lord, that you have for yourself a people, yes, without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish, a people that will arise in this new day, that will reflect, yes, the redemptive reality of your intention. We thank you for the spirit of truth. Thank you for the spirit of newness. Thank you for the spirit of grace. Thank you, Father, for the ability to break forth, oh God, without limitation, without hesitation. Thank you, Father. We honor your name. We glorify your name for this beautiful day. This is the day of the Lord, and we celebrate, yes, with the heavens. We celebrate with the earth. We celebrate what your spirit is doing globally across the nations. We thank you. We honor your holy name. Let the name of God once again be proclaimed. Let the glory of God once again fill the earth. The knowledge of your glory cover the earth as the water covers the sea. We thank you, O God, that our voice, Lord, will not be stopped, will not be shut down. We will continue to raise the band, the standard of this brand new day. We will continue to speak, O God, yes, Lord, into terra firma. We will continue to proclaim, O God, your will and your counsel, O God, into the hearts of, of cities and, and communities, O God, and society will be transformed in the power of truth. We thank you. Your word will go forth. Your spirit, O God, will break forth. There will be, O God, healing, deliverance, restoration, deliverance, restoration, transformation will take place, O God, in homes, family this morning, in churches, O God, puppets, O God, that are dry, will receive, O God, freshness, O God, of your, of your rain, of your water, O God. Yes, voices, O God, that have almost been shut down, will be awakened this morning. We thank you for sight to see, ears to hear. We thank you for an awakening this morning. You're doing a new thing. And we celebrate you, O God. We bless your holy name. Thank you, God, for the move of your spirit. Thank you, Father, for the move of your spirit. Thank you, Father, for the move of your spirit. It is your spirit that moves us. Without your spirit, we can do nothing. Without your spirit, we have nothing to say. Without your spirit, we have nothing to proclaim. Without your spirit, we have no standing. Without your spirit, we have no posture in the earth. Without your spirit, we have no voice in the earth. So we thank you this morning that your spirit is moving once again in our lives, oh God. We thank you. Honor and glory to you. Praise waits for you in Zion. We celebrate your name. Glory and honor to you this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining this morning. We just bless the Lord for a new day. We thank God for a new season. I want to encourage us this morning again as we continue to track the principle of coming out of, coming out of you know, the ark. We're pressing towards a place called Zion. Zion is our final destination. And the Spirit of God will continue, amen, to lead us. It's a place, amen, where we want to come into. And as we surrender and follow, amen, the guidance of the Spirit, I, I want to believe, oh God, that I want to believe, excuse me, I want to believe that many of us, amen, will be able to develop that spiritual capacity. I want to, you know, share something with us this morning. Of course, we know that we are dealing with coming out of the ark. And uh, in that, we've been also dealing with a principle. We've been looking at the concept of, you know, a, a divine order, restoration. We've been looking at the restoration of, you know, of the, of the altar. We've been talking about the concept, amen, of the new priesthood. We've been talking about, amen, how that priesthood will define the kind of authority. Remember that everything God wants us to do, amen, are armed with certain authority. But this authority don't just come. We don't just get to have this authority. There are systems, standards its principles, values, and of course, protocols that we have to follow. And we have, we've also been dealing with the concept that if we're going to engage, amen, the, the, power, the power and the forces of darkness before us, we need to understand, amen, the, 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 if you will, the standard and the systems of God, all right? We, we, we know that whenever God wants to do something in the earth, the first thing he does, amen, he gets, he gets himself a man, and that man establishes what you define as an altar. But this morning, I want us to go back to you know, the concept of coming out of the ark. You know, in coming out of the ark, we've been looking at some key people we dealt with. Uh, uh, we dealt with Noah. Uh, of course, uh, we, from Noah, we, we looked at the transition uh, and uh, the concept of, uh, uh, um, you know, the building of the Tower of Babel and all of that. But this morning, I want us to look at another chapter. You know, I want us to look at, you know, uh, chapter chapter 12, amen, of, of Genesis. Remember, Genesis is the principle that we are building this entire uh, order of what the Lord, amen, is doing in our day. 
Excuse me. Genesis is the principle, is the order, is the system, if you will. All right. Genesis to us is not just some book that we read. Amen. Genesis, amen, is 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 the, is the blueprint. Genesis is the blueprint, all right, is the first in order, is the first, amen, in standard. Genesis is, 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 is how God, amen, kickstarts, amen, his process. Remember, there was a world before Genesis, all right? So when the Bible says in the beginning God created, remember that God was before the beginning, all right? So, but we see that through Genesis, we, we, pick, we, pick, an, we pick a principle there that everything that is done in Genesis become, amen, the first point or the principle that we need to look into in engaging life. So the entire book of Genesis, all right, gives us something, gives us insight into the ways of God, into the, 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 the concept of approaching the things of God, particularly if we're starting something. All right. The, the way to start something, all right, of course, deals with the concept of beginning. But one word all right, that we see in, in, the, in the book of Genesis, that word beginning does not actually refer to a start. It refers to the principle of how things must begin, how things must be established, how things must be approached. Are you getting the point? So Genesis is not just about the point of start. Yes, it is the point of start, but it's a principle that defines how, in fact, I was, I was looking at a translation. I was looking at a commentary, and that commentary was explaining Genesis. And that commentary says, all right, that, you know, when the Bible says, you know, Genesis, the Bible is actually talking about the, the first seven days of how God created things. So Genesis, amen, is, is, is the principle of, if you will, the principle of perfection. Remember, seven is the, is the number of perfection. Yes, from one to seven, you see an order. You see, a, so if you read Genesis one to seven, you kind of, pick the heart of God, the mind of God regarding life, be it in relationship, amen, be it in doing business, be it, amen, in, in engaging, you know, uh, 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 you know, career, whatever it is that you're looking for in life. If you understand Genesis chapter 1, all right, to chapter, you know, to chapter 7, all right, the, the Bible talk about the seven day, remember the seven day when God rests. All of chapter 1 to chapter 7 kind of cover, amen, the entire story of humanity. It covers the entire story of humanity. And I think that is something that we need to understand because one of the things the Spirit of God is revealing to us is our ability to approach the Word of God because to the degree we understand and we know how to handle the Word of God is to the degree we know how to deal with life. If we don't know how to handle the Word of God, if we don't know how to interpret the Word of God, if we don't know how to engage the Word of God, then we really don't know how to define who we are because our identity is found, amen, in the descriptions of God's Word. Our, the Word of God is our mirror. We look into the Word of God and find ourselves. And as we find ourselves, we know how to relate with people. All right? Regardless of how complex, how difficult, amen, how beautiful, loving they are, we can always find, amen, people's understanding and definition of life via the word of God because the word of God, amen, is our reference. The word of God, amen, is our, is our blueprint, is our standard, all right? Now, one of the things that I want to explain, all right, this morning as we deal with, you know, the concept of Genesis, you know, chapter, tw chapter 12, in the principle of coming out of the ark, remember that is a word that we are tracking. We are coming out of the ark, coming out of the ark, amen, has become, you know, a, a prototype of how we approach life, how we deal with, amen, uh, uh, this concept of new beginning, all right? They've given us new beginning, all right? We, 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 have, we have left the day of the, of the coronavirus, if you will. All right? And there are all kinds of definitions and interpretation to what the corona, you know, uh, pandemic and attack, you know, is, you know, but, but we are looking at it, amen, from the perspective of the voice of God. All right. Yes, the world system have got their own, you know, idea of what that is and they can give you their own interpretation and all of that. But we want to understand that, amen, whenever God speaks, something happens in the earth and whatever happens in the earth, amen, in our interpretation must allow Aligned to the demand of God, all right? Whenever God speaks, we must be able to align what God is saying, amen, to his intention, to his redemptive intention, amen. Of course, sometimes to his judgment, 
even to his condemnation. All right, we know that you know it was condemnation, amen, judgment and condemnation that led Noah, amen, to to you know to to be transported from where he was, where he was born, amen, where he lived, where he where he grew up, where he developed, where he got married, amen, to the point that God moved him from that point, amen, to the next point because the Bible said Noah Noah was a righteous man and he found favor in the sight of God. So we see a principle that righteousness and favor can move us from one point, amen, that God wants to destroy to the next point that he's, pro, you know, that he's pointing his favor to us or that he's pointing his finger to us. So righteousness and, 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 and favor in the sight of God gives us mobility or can transport us, amen, in the day of darkness, in the day of destruction. Remember, it was Abraham who stood, amen, on behalf of his brother. God was going to destroy Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah, amen. No, Lot did not know that Sodom and Gomorrah was going to be judged. Remember when he lifted his eyes, he made a, he, he made a choice, yes. When, when he departed from his, 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 his uncle, the, 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 the uncle said, lift up your eyes. You know, you, you make a choice. And he made a bad choice because of amen, his ignorance, because of his spiritual ignorance, because of his lack of knowledge. All right? He, he said, lack of knowledge is, 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 is beyond the resource that, is, that we have or we don't have. Knowledge has nothing to do with all right, what we have because uh, uh, we saw that proximity can bring us can bring us into into wealth proximity proximity can bring us into wealthy place yes another principle i'll share with you regarding proximity the sons of the prophet the scripture said they they made a de demand on the prophet they said they wanted to expand where they were staying they said this place that we're staying is too is too small for us so because of their proximity you see when you when you walk in certain proximity you have access to certain to certain grace to certain blessing to it's not because that you deserve it but because of your proximity you know proximity can help us to 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 accelerate in in favor and blessing and goodness so because of the proximity of lot all right, with of course with his with his uncle Abraham, the scripture said, all right, he 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 was he was blessed, he was rich. But this guy has not been tested. This guy has not has not really gone through the process of developing wisdom. All he was learning in the house of Abraham, amen, was to accumulate wealth. He wasn't learning wisdom from Abraham. He wasn't developing capacity. He wasn't developing the ability, amen, to become a leader someday. Because the moment he was he was asked to make a ch one choice, the only choice he will ever make in his life lift up your eyes he, he looked amen and he decided by his by his kana, kana eyes he looked by his physical eyes amen he saw the bible says he saw the plane amen of Sodom and Gomorrah like like the lush you know garden of Eden I mean, when he looked at Sodom and Gomorrah, when he looked at that place, the place looked like Sodom, excuse me, the place looked like the Garden of Eden. So you can imagine. I mean, anybody will fall for that. That's to tell us, amen, that when you're connected to somebody like Abraham, all right, that your eyes must not be set on the wealth, that you must be looking for wisdom. You must be looking for something, amen, that will make you grow and mature. Because in the day of the test, amen, of Lord, amen, he goofed. Like I said, the same principle applied to, all right, the, you know, the sons of the prophets, all right, their proximity, they were in the house of the prophet. Of course, they were all ap apprentices, you know. <laughs> so, so they said, no, no, we want to expand because I guess they were, they, they, they were not the only prophetic school. They were not the only, you know, guys around. They were all the, so they, they were like, you know, they're like those, you know, like the sons, you know, the prodigal son. They said, no, we also want to expand. We want to grow. I mean, I want to be like other people. I also want to prove a point <laughs> that we have arrived. You would, you would notice that, you know, the, the, the prophet was, was reluctant. He said, okay, go do whatever you want to do. And the Bible says they went to borrow an axe. I mean, you don't want to build the things of, of the spirit. You don't want to build the things of the spirit based on what you go to borrow. And I understand that today there are a lot of us that are still living on borrowed understanding, borrowed wisdom. What I mean by borrow means that it is not birthed by you. It's not something that, that, you know, that, that came out of your own loins. You heard it, amen, and you ran with it. You heard it and you ran with it, amen. A lot of people today are running ministry, lives, amen, marriages, based on borrowed idea, based on what they read, saw, you know. Some people's life is, a, is the extension of Uvango, whatever they call that program, you know, your you know, uh, uh, seven-day Dilan and all of, you know, they, how they run their life, how they run their home, amen, is based on what they watch on the TV, you know, on soap opera. It's based on what Hollywood tells them. It's based on what somebody told them. It's based on what they read in a book. It's good to be informed, but whatever... 
Amen. Informs you must first transform you. Whatever informs you must first transform you before you can apply it. All right. If an information has not become part and parcel of your life, you don't want to use it. You want to test it. The Bible says, test all spirit, test all knowledge and information. Test it. If you, if you have not tested it and you go use it, it, it may cost you. And so this was the problem. All right. The, 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 the Bible says that, you know, the sons of the prophet, they said, oh, we, 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 we want to expand. There was nothing wrong in expanding where they're living, but it was in time. But guess what? They put a pressure on the prophet. The prophet said, go ahead. And for, for, for us to, you know, understand what they were doing, the Bible says they went to borrow an axe. I mean, they could have asked the prophet. We didn't have an axe to chop down wood. Because if you're gonna if you're gonna build, amen, you've got to have the material. You've got to you've got to have the you know instrument. Now, one of the things that Lord is doing to us in this brand new day, amen, is that He's giving us tools and materials to build with. We have not started building. He's only giving us tools. He's giving us principle. He's giving us pattern. He's showing us, amen. All I have been declaring and proclaiming, amen, in the past few you know few days, excuse me, few few weeks, few months, all right, is giving us tools, tools, tools. I'm releasing. I'm giving us toolbox, amen. We have to use those tools. These these are not magic. These things don't just excuse me. These things just don't work by themselves, amen. We have to know how to apply them, how to use them. So don't think that the things that I'm saying, amen, you can just throw them in the fire. Suddenly you get the thing. No, no, no. They are tools that you've got to use. You've got to apply them, all right. And part of what I want to talk about this morning is the, the concept of that application, all right. Because transition is it, not about, all right, uh, uh, or rather, new beginning is not just about okay, we're starting afresh. No, there, there's going to be there's going to be a transition, and when there's transition, ah, there's all kinds of you know emotions, there's all kinds of you know challenges in psychologically, there's all kinds of battles that you're going to be. You see, because it's not easy for us to move from one point to another. New beginning, amen, is about transition. New beginning is is about God saying, I need you to shift from where you were. All right, to this point, to this place. This is the point that I am right now. This is the place that I'm going to be dealing with. This is the place that I'm going to be speaking from. This is the point and place that I'm going to be guiding you from. All right, it's so you've got to live where you are. So God is proclaimed new day. God has proclaimed amen. A new point. He's shown us where He wants to engage life. All right, but we have to remember movement is not just a physical thing. Movement, amen, is 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 a mind thing. Amen, is an is is a psychological thing. Movement, amen, is a state of the mind. Movement is a state of how we think. Movement is a state of how we reason. Movement is a state of how we how we see life. Amen. Is is our perspective. Movement is a perspective. Amen. Movement is is understanding. Movement, amen, is a choice you make. Amen. You can remain in a particular place and still be moving and still be moving. You're tracking with God. You're moving with God. Movement is not a physical thing. All right. You 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 can change jobs, amen, and still not change. Amen. You can change wife and husband, and still not and still be the same people. But some people think, oh well, if if I can just leave this man, if I can just leave this woman, my life will change. <laughs> Sometimes it's not the, it's not living of the person. It is actually you shifting, amen, how you see things. Amen. Sometimes, most time, our battle, our perspective, amen, our perspective, our, they are, they, you see, because that same person that you're fighting every day, wait, amen, if only you can just look at that person from a different perspective. You know what Jesus said? He said, Father, forgive them. I mean, these are evil people. These are evil people, but he could, he could, he could relate back to them, amen, in anger. He said, Father, forgive them. The, the entire sin of the world. I mean, you talk about Roman Empire, wickedness you talk about all kinds of he said father forgive them listen for they do not do they do not know what they are doing all right now that is a perspective of maturity that's a perspective perspective is what redeem humanity perspective change amen how 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 jesus i mean jesus could have condemned jesus said i could have called down 12 legions of my father to deliver me it, it, the issue is not about deliverance. The issue is about going through a process, amen, via a perspective, amen, that aligns, that, that is in sync, amen, with the Father. So sometimes God wants you to be in that fire, not because you cannot deliver yourself, not because God cannot deliver you out of the fire, but because there's something bigger that you're not seeing. There's something more, more, more grand, amen. I mean, the world, the Bible says, if, if the prince of this world knew, if they knew uh, Jesus defeated the devil via a higher wisdom, if the prince of this world knew, he would not have crucified. So when the devil was crucifying Jesus, when the devil was, you know, lambasting Jesus with all kinds of pain and all kinds of things, listen, he thought he was winning. 
You see, weakness is never is never an expression, amen, of 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 lack of of lack of wisdom. Sometimes in our weakness, the Bible says, amen, his strength is what perfected. <laughs> you didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. What I'm sharing with you this morning will help you to know how to how to transverse, how to transit, how to move and navigate, amen, the, the days ahead. Because listen, friends, I'm not gonna lie to you. There are challenges coming our way. And in this transition, amen, that we call new day, new beginning, all right, sometimes it's going to be bumpy, all right, we're going we're gonna to be suffering from all kinds of emo emotional, you know, uh, uh, you know, issues, we're going to be dealing with all kinds of moments and, 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 and all kinds of things that will want to draw, draw us back, drag us back, amen, and make you feel like you're not actually making progress. And, and how you look at life, how you look at yourself, amen, it's going to be amen, important. Because how you look at things, amen, will define your next course of decision. How you look at things. You see, you can look at me and decide. You know, a lot of people can be looking at me right now and have different conclusions based on what they're hearing, based on what they see. All, amen, has to do with your understanding, your perspective. You see, immature people cannot listen to what I'm talking about. People that are not ready to learn, that are not ready, amen, to have that sense of higher wisdom, higher understanding. You know, say, what's this guy talking about? Because they cannot see, amen, the wisdom in what I'm saying. You understand? There are people, there are churches that we go to, they just want, you know, the God of miracles that happened now, 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 now. The God that answered by fire. Fire does not just happen now, now, now. Amen? Before fire f k k fell, amen, there have been principles, there have been things, hallelujah. Before the rain came, there have been things that have been processes, amen, that have gone, hallelujah. Be 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 before things can happen, amen, we've got to understand that there are certain things that must, that must have been done, that have must have been planted, amen. But people just want to see results. Result is as a result of process that we don't see. Result is as a result of processes that we don't see. So I want to, you know, kind of bring a balance to many of the things that we're talking about because I don't want you to jump into conclusion. All right? I don't want you to jump into con because if you jump into conclusion, you're going to end up like John the Baptist who was asking the question. Go ask him. <laughs> Are you the one to come or should we be expecting another one? Yes, yes, yes. Journeying with God sometimes can be, can, you know, can be tedious if you lose sight. Journeying with God, amen, in most cases can be very tedious, can be tiring if you lose sight of what he's doing. Listen to this. I was listening to, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, 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 a podcast this morning and this man was saying, faith, listen to this, we all need faith to, to, to live, to exist, to be able to walk with God. But do you know the Bible says, amen. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus is the author of faith. I mean, it dawned on me like a brick this morning. It's like somebody just hit me with a brick. You know, Jesus is the author. You know the reason why people cannot have faith? You know the reason why people will argue and say, no, I don't believe this God thing is not real? It's not real because they don't have Jesus in their life because Jesus is the author of faith. You, you cannot have faith, amen, without Jesus Christ in your life. And just having Jesus, amen, it's not just a mouth thing. You've got to have a relationship because having a relationship with Jesus, amen, allow you to begin to hear. You want to hear the heart of Christ. You need to have a relationship with him. It's not about going to church. It's not about this religious thing that we do. Right? And this is why we are doing what we're doing. This is the process where we're developing, amen, a relationship with Christ. And sometimes, I tell you, to make that transition of saying, I want to have a relationship with God, amen, it's going to be difficult. Why? Because you're living, you are living where you were where you are you are used to you're living your father's house that's what i'm talking about abraham you're leaving your father's house amen to a land that he's going to show you friends if you've been used to people you've been used to the environment you, i mean imagine you're south african you you've been used to you know the, the 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 environment the life amen the culture the beliefs everything that defines you as a south african you understand? You can walk into a bank, all right, and 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 as long as you're fine, all right, they can give you, you know, uh, uh, you know, credit. They can give you, you know, a loan. You know, you don't even need to walk into a bank. You through your phone, you can just, you know, you know, you know, cash in, you know, uh, a loan to do whatever you want to do. I mean, it's that easy. Listen to this. That that seemingly luxury in some other places, some country, that is like it. it, it, it can never happen. 
You understand? Because you live in a world, amen, that is credit, credit based, credit run. Where I come from in, in, in West Africa, no, no, it doesn't work like that. If you want to buy things, you want to do things, you've got to have your cash. I remember saying to people, you know, that the first time I bought my car, I paid cash. You know, saying to some guys here in South Africa, they, I mean, their jaw almost drugs. Like, what? You mean you paid cash to buy a car? I said, yes. I mean, to them, that is impossible. Yes, because Lee, the environment you live in defines the quality of your faith. If you live in an environment that makes everything easy for you, what do you need faith for? Why would you need faith? So this is God saying to Abraham, live, amen, that which you're used to, the, eco the economic lifestyle. Live, amen, the, 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 the political environment. Live, amen, the people that, that, that have defined security to you. Live your father's house. To a land I'm going to show you. I mean, that is the epitome of faith. And that's why most now we call Abraham the father of faith. No, Abraham expressed faith. But Abraham, amen, is not the author of faith. Abraham showed to us how to apply faith. But if you want to have faith, you need to have Christ. Are you getting the point that I'm making? Because I really want this concept of new beginning reset, amen, to, to, you know, to, to, to really dawn on us in a way that we can relate to it. Of course, by faith. When we say relate to it, I'm not talking about relate, relating to it sensually. You cannot comprehend the things of God with your own kind of mind. The Bible says the kind of man cannot understand the things of God. Why? Because they are spiritually discerned. So we need to understand that, all right, yes, we're dealing with certain principles and values, but those values and principles, amen, must become part and parcel of our psyche. They must become part and parcel, amen, of how we live life, how we think, how we reason, amen, how we look at, have you seen the point that I'm making right now? How we, how we engage life. You can look at things, amen, and conclude. You can look at one thing and, have, and come to di three different conclusions based on your perspective. Based on your perspective. So life, amen, the believer's life, the Christian life, amen, the, the, the kind of life that heaven is calling us into when we talk about new beginning, when we talk about, amen, engaging a new day, when we talk about proceeding into the third day, when we talk about, amen, the, the new order of priesthood, all of this has to deal with, amen, how we process the things of God. Because how we process the things of God defines how we interact in the earth, how we connect, amen, with people, how we deal with issues, amen, in the earth. We have to look at things from that perspective. Because if your perspective is wrong, your conclusion, amen, will always be wrong. If your perspective is wrong, your conclusion will be wrong. So while we're hearing all these beautiful, powerful, you know, teachings and, 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 and uh, principles and values... If it's, if it's been accepted, amen, on the wrong perspective, our conclusion would always be wrong. So I, I want us to understand what the Spirit of God is saying in this moment in time, all right, is that we need to develop a higher perspective. We need to, higher perspective, of course, demands that we have, amen, a walk with God. And this is what the life of faith, which deals with, amen, a, a, a connection with the prophetic spirit. You know, how the prophet, our prophetic people look at things is different from the way everybody, all right, look at things. You know, how the prophet comes or our prophetic people come into conclusion. How they are able to come into conclusion is totally different from the way other people come into conclusion. People can look at things, amen, and, and say, okay, this is it based on how we've seen things, based on what is going on. You come to this conclusion and amen, a prophetic generation come to a different conclusion. Why? Because their perspective, amen, is, uh, is enhanced via, amen, their connectivity, their relationship with God, via, amen, their, their walk with God, amen, via, amen, their interaction with the word of God. So if you're, if if your, if your understanding, amen, about what God is doing in this new day is not aligning, amen, to the process, to the principle, amen, of Genesis. If you are not seeing this thing, amen, from the light, from the value standard of heaven, your conclusion will be wrong. Even if you have all the, you know, so-called prophetic word and all these teachings that Isaiah is doing, you'll be living a different life. But what God is demanding and calling us into is we got to take all this truth that we're hearing, amen, and begin to align them to our, our life. And that's where the challenges is. Because, you know, we, we are human beings. Human beings based on certain, you know, uh, 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 um, 
orientations and uh, uh, and beliefs and you know habits we 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 have formed certain you know understanding and value system you know behavior about uh, to to life all right yes our life is a submission of the things that we have imbibed we have come to accept say this is who i am who you are amen are, are layers of value standards you know you know characters behavior that you have come to accept some of the things that you define as part of your life are totally you know against the laws of god now those are the things god wants us to begin to have sight into but you cannot you cannot you cannot live amen in your blind spot amen and believe that the things of god is going to work for you amen if you if you have blindness you go the you go to the house of sight all right if you can't see things accurately and properly you go to the house where they're able to work to give you sight yes because your sight will then allow you or help you to know how to what make decision amen we are the product of what we see we are the product of what we see and what we see is how we conclude amen yes if you can't see things from the from the right perspective of course you'll be seeing them from the wrong perspective it, it, that's just that's how it is amen we can either go right or we go left. We can either be right, right or wrong. Amen. We can either be in true in the in, in, in accepting truth or we are walking in error. Uh, there's no in between. <laughs> you, you get the point. So having an understanding of what the Lord is saying and and doing, particularly, you see, this is a message to the body of Christ. Because this transition, amen, is going to create all kinds of things. It's, we call it new beginning, reset. It's not an easy thing. You know, you know, we, when we say reset, it's not as easy as just pressing the button. Reset. <laughs> and then everything just automatically. No. Because when God is dealing with humans, amen, God deals with all the various faculties. That's why the Bible says we must what? Present ourselves. Presenting yourself to Christ as a living sacrifice means you're presenting every, every sector, every aspect, every ounce of your strength, everything that defines who you are, your perspective, your views, your values, amen, your understanding. Every aspect of your life must be presented to God so that, amen, Christ can then walk on those things and reform them. He said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind is that the mind of Christ becomes what guides you, becomes what leads you, becomes what teaches us, amen, to, you know, to follow. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so that is very important. That is not just about, you know, uh, well, I'm renewing my mind so that, you know, the devil, some bad thoughts will not get into my mind. No, that is the transformation of an entire life. Renewing your mind deals with the transformation of your entire value system. Who you are today is based on the decisions that you have made. Your decisions, amen, are, are, are the product, amen, of your values. Your values, amen, are, are based on the things that you have come to believe and accept. That's just the, that's just the truth. Amen. We, 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 we don't just wake up one morning and then we have this person called Isaiah. Isaiah Phillips, amen, is, 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 a, is, a, is, a, is a culmination, amen, of events, of, of beliefs, amen, of values, of culture. Yes, you've got to understand that. So if I can locate it in my life certain values that are not supposed to be there, when I mean values are not supposed, in other words, those values are not aligning, are not speaking into God's, God's will, are not aligning to God's standard. It is my responsibility, amen, regardless of how long it's going to take me, it is my responsibility to look at what God says regarding my life and begin to apply those principles in those hard areas that I have come to believe and accept. You know, there are certain areas of our life that we think we cannot change because we've tried several times. Maybe the reason why we fail in those areas, amen, is based on how we approach those things. If we approach, amen, the, 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 the challenges of life from amen, the position of Christ, from the strength of Christ, from the wisdom of Christ, from the perspective of Christ, we will change things. Think about that. Amen. To accept failure itself, amen, is to accept a principle that negates the values of God in your life. Did you hear what I just said? To accept failure regarding any aspect of our life. When I mean failure, in other words, uh, uh, I've been trying this thing, it's not working. I've tried it several times, it's not working. Maybe this is what God, amen, has desired for me. Maybe this is the plan of God for my life. You come to a wrong conclusion because you tried it four, five, six, seven times, maybe 20 times, all right? Remember that concept we've, we shared some time ago? Yes, 
The prophet said to the king, you know, strike, you know, strike the ground. After he asked him to, you know, to shoot the arrow, then he said, you strike the ground. He struck the ground how many times? Three times and he stopped. The prophet got angry with him. He said, you, you should have strike five or six times and you would have defeated this enemy completely. So, see, the attitude of the king, amen, was reflective, amen, in his approach. The same thing, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the Syrian, you know, uh, uh, general that came to the prophet, they, they told him, go, go, go have a bath, all right, in, 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 in River Jordan. It was in River Jordan. Yeah, I guess River Jordan. So go, have, go, go dip yourself in the, in the, in the, in the river. He, he did a few times. He began to complain. He said, what's going on here? <laughs> the, 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 you know, the, the, the little damsel girl said, you know, if the prophet asks you to do this, go do it. And by the time, amen, he did it the seventh time. The Bible says his skin became like that of a baby. Clean, completely, you know, new, new skin. Now, there is, there, is, there is something about faith here that we've got to understand. If there is anything right now we need in this season in time, is that we need the faith of God to help us break through the limitations, the challenges that will be, amen, facing us, that we'll be facing as we move. Moving, amen, demands that we move against opposition. Movement demands, amen, that we swim against the tide. Jesus said, come, guys, let's go to the other side. And the Bible says, amen, and the, and, and, and the boisterous wind came, amen, to challenge the word of the Lord, but he was sleeping. You see, we've got to understand that if, if the, because the, 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 you know, they, they told us it's a new day, it's a reset, that things are just going to work out freely. No, it's not going to be. It's not going to be. All right. There's going to be resistance and the resistance, amen, starts from you, amen, what you believe. Start from your values. The resistance that you are going to face in stepping into the new day, amen, will, will come from your, your perspective, amen, how you see your life, how you see your environment, how you see yourself, amen, how you see the word of God, how you see things. The resistance is going to start from you. Before you start looking at people resisting you, before you start looking at some devil, no, the resistance will begin from, amen, your own perspective, your own understanding about the things of God. So there's going to be a lot of correction, amen, in this, in, this, in this new day. That's what I'm talking about, amen. Starting afresh, beginning afresh means looking at things and adjusting them, amen, to the way the Lord will require them. You see, I, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to allow the enemy to push me, amen, and say, well, this thing is not working. Listen to this. If this is the standard, if this is what God says, if this is what God demands of me, that is what I'm going to become. That is what I'm going Listen, I don't care how many times I fail. That is the attitude you've got to develop. If you don't have, if you don't develop that, you know, you know, a, a, a die hard attitude, amen, a continual process and pushing. If you don't develop that, listen to the, the devil will weary you. The enemy will weary you. He will use people, situation. He will even use your own family member, friends, colleague, amen, to weary you. Yes. It, that's part of the tactics of the enemy. It will weary you until you submit. It will weary you until you give in. You see, how many times have you tried this thing? It's not working. Come on, look for something else. Are you going, do you have a, a benchmark point in your life where you are going to turn away? Can you be, can you be persuaded, amen, by the, by the voice of Naomi to turn back? Naomi said, I have nothing to offer you guys. My son is dead. Even if I have another one, amen. I mean, it's of no use. I, 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 you, you, are you getting the point? I, which point are you going to get to in your challenge of life that you will turn back and go back to your own people? Because what, what we're dealing with, amen, is not going back to your own people. Let me take you quickly to, are you seeing that, are you seeing how, how I'm approaching the process, amen, of Genesis 12? I've not even opened to Genesis 12, but all that I've been talking about, amen, deals with Genesis chapter 12. Because we're dealing with the principle of faith in engaging the new day. Remember, before Genesis 12 is the Tower of Babel. Condemnation. Judgment. And then God began again. God is forever looking for a generation that can align with him, that can believe, that can stand with him, that can agree with him. So if you read Genesis 12, in fact, when you begin to read Genesis 11 to us, you know, the end, maybe I should start from Genesis uh, um, 11, just to give you a kind of a background to what we're dealing with. Remember that Abraham, all right, we talk about Father Abraham. When God called Abraham, he was a young man. Just like you and I, amen. Abraham was a young man. In fact, the call of God, amen, in the household of Abraham began with Abraham's father, Terah. Let's go to Genesis, um, Genesis 11. 
I want to just kind of give you a perspective, a, a background, because you've got to understand the word of God in context. Genesis 11, verse 27. Thank you, Father. I hope you're getting this this morning. This is important. This is the account of Terah. Who is Terah? Terah was the father of Abraham. Terah became the father of Abraham. That's a, I'm reading. Terah became the father of Abraham, Nahor, and Aaron. And Aaron became the father of Lot. You get it? While his father Terah was still alive, Aaron died in all of the Chaldeans. That's Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia. <laughs> In the in, in in Aaron died in in all of the of, of the Chaldeans in the land of his birth. Abraham and Nahor both married. Those are the two sons of Terah left. Abraham and all married. All right. The name of Abraham Abraham's wife was Sarai, and and the name of Nahor's wife was Milka. She was the daughter of Aaron. So Abraham married. Amen. Uh, uh, um, the daughter of his brother. All right, let's read on. She was the daughter of Aaron, the father of, of both Melka and Iskar. Verse 30. Now Sarah was barren. That's always the principle of God. I love God. You will find this principle entire in, in, in the entire, in, entire word of God. Whenever God wants to use a man, it's like he starts with that state of barrenness so that nobody comes and says, well, 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 I had all, I had all that it takes. You know, God will take you, amen, and put you in the state of barrenness and then he begins his process so that no one will be able to challenge and say, well, well, you know, uh, this thing just happened coincidental. No, there's nothing coincidental. God will make sure that the well is dry. They said, they said in the third day, it was on the third day, just like in the days that we live in, the Bible says there was a wedding in the in Cana of Galilee in the third day. We're in the third day, right? Yes, we've been talking about that. There was a wedding. <laughs> there's all kinds of relationship, all kinds of merger, all kinds of covenant going on but this thing amen i've left god they've left god out of it just like amen on the third day they wanted to build a tower unto god god judged them so on that same third day the bible said there was a there was a wedding in cana of galilee i'm just showing you principles here you see the word of god like i said some time ago amen is built on principles amen they fall upon each other the things of god amen are like you know standards you know they're like they're like a ladder there is nothing here, you know, here and there. The, the things of God are not scattered. They, are, they flow. You know, it's like a wave. They flow. The things of God flows. Yeah, are you getting the are you getting the point? Bible says yes. Let's read on Terah. Well, where did I stop now? Uh, now, yes, verse thirteen. Now, Sarah was barren, and he had no children. Terah took the son. Terah took his son Abraham, his grandson Lot, son of Aaron. And his daughter-in-law Sarah, the wife of his of his son Abraham, and together they set out. Amen. They set. They look at this. They set out from all of the Chaldeans to go to Cana. They set out. It, it, it seemed, you know, the father of Terah. Excuse me. It, it seemed Terah, the father of Abraham, had been picking a prophetic signal. Remember back in the day, um, this, this land of all of the Chaldeans is, is a well-built, well-established, is like your today America. All right? It was a well-advanced, um, civilized society, even though they were idol worshippers. But, 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 but it was a land flowing with milk and honey. They, they prospered in human terms. But the Bible says that Terah um, took his son, um, his grandson, and they began to journey, going to, uh, towards where? Towards the land of Cana. Is this the same Cana God promised the children of Israel that had not been born? Yes, there is always a divine amen, place that heaven has ordained amen, and prepared for his own people. Cana was amen, a shadow of the land of Zion. <laughs> Cana in the human term was a place amen, of abundance. It's a place where God has ordained and chosen for his own. Even before, hallelujah, the children of Israel were born. This was before amen, Isaac, Jacob, all of these people were born. To the point that the, the prophecy of 430 years in the land of bondage was declared. The Bible says, Terah, the father of Abraham, set his face amen, to us, the land of Cana. Friends, in the things of God, we've got to understand the principle of migration, transition. 
I just need to establish there. We have not a continuous city, but we're seeking. We're forever seeking for that which is to come. We are moving towards a place. We're going towards a place. Your life should never be stagnant. And what I mean by that is that what, what you are thinking and how you are thinking must always be progressive. Progressive, amen, in, in, in alignment to the will of God leads you to the place where heaven has ordained. The Bible says, Terah took his, his son, Abraham. Abraham, remember at this point, his, his name is still Abraham. God has not cut covenant. God co cause a covenant when our name is changed. Or when he changes our name, he cuts a covenant with us. So the changing of name, basically, amen, is a seal, is symbolic, amen, of a covenant we have with God. That's important. Because your name is a reflection of your nature, of your character, of your intention, of your prophetic program. What you bear, amen, is a reflection of who you are. You know, we live in a society today where the issue of name it means nothing to people. But every time they call your name, don't you understand that they invoke something about your, about your destiny. Every time your name is called, there's an invocation. There's a declaration. Amen. Whenever you call Isaiah Phillips, my name is not just Isaiah. It's Isaiah iPhone Phillips. Akintola, whenever you call that name, all the grace and the spirit, amen, that defines my prophetic, amen, calling in life is summoned. You call it, if you want to summon the spirit, you call them by name. We are all spirits. Some of us bear names that is totally against God's counsel and plan for our life. But in a world where we live in today, people don't believe in changing of their name. You, you can't change your name. If you have spiritual understanding and insight into the things of God, amen. You need to, you need to have an understanding of what led your parents to give you the kind of name they gave to you. You see? You think Akintala was the name, amen, that, you know, my, my, you know, my father gave back to me. No, that was a compound name of, you know, the clan that I came from, from, you know, the family that I came from. It was Omikule. And I've shared this before. That name was dedicated to the goddess of the water. That name, Omikule, was dedicated because I came from a very, you know, you know large family, all right? Who, who great, my great, 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 great grandfather, all of them, all right? They were dedicated to the worship of, you know, the goddess of the water. The Oshun, the Oshun spirit. In that if you know about, you know, uh, 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 you know, gods and all of that from Nigeria, you will understand that the Oshun spirit is one of the most powerful. In fact, it's not just something that is limited to, you know, to, to you know, to Nigeria. Back in America, in Brazil, they all they still worship. You know, when they do the Oshun celebration, people come from different part of the world. They go to a place in, 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 uh, in where I come from, the Oshun, you know, the Oshun state, all right, and people go to worship. They go to the Oshun River, all right. It's, it's, it's a place that they go there and worship these gods. So you gotta understand that my life has been in. I, I mean, I've been, I've been warring from the, if, if, in fact, from, from before I was born. So I understand that the devil is after my life. I know that as I grew, I began to understand, and I had the boldness. You know, this was just when I gave my life to Jesus. I've, I will share the testimony again with you. My name was, oh, my son name was Omikule. You know, and I went to my father just before my father passed away. My father lost his sight. But I said to my father, I said, you know, daddy, I want to change my son name. I mean, it's unheard of. Where I come from, changing your son name, all right, is like demanding emancipation. It's like demanding, you know, you, you don't want to be connected to your family again. I mean, family means a lot, all right, to, you know, to, to, to my people, to the, you know, to the place. I mean, of course, family means everything to many people, but, you know, the, the closest people I can, I can relate to when you talk about family is the Jewish, the Jewish culture. You see, the Jewish people would do anything for their family. You, you don't want to mess with their family. You don't want to mess with their name. No, they would do anything. They would do anything. So where I come from, you know, the, the Yoruba culture, family is everything. In fact, they tell you your name, the, the, your, fa your family's name is everything you have. It's everything you have, no matter how rich. I mean, my family, we've got professors got two professors in my family so my family is not just one of those you know no, no it's not just it's a, it's a large family and you've got all you know just like in every family you've got the very rich you've got the poor you've got the highly educated all right and all kinds of you know the good the bad and the ugly but i see a generous spirit in my family that i didn't want to relate to and i know that they couldn't change it because i know how things are going and every, how everybody ends up 
And, and, and it, at this time, I'd given my life to Jesus. This was how, how, how daring I was. I mean, it, it, it just occurred to me. You, you know, you can change your surname. Because I knew, all right, that my, my father's, my father's father's, you know, name, which is the name we ought to be bearing, is Akintola. But the general compound name, you see, we all bear a general compound name. And you said, Omikule, and I said to my father, I don't want to bear this surname again. I mean, it's like, it's like you drop a bomb. And my father said, are you sure? Is that what you want? I said, yes. I said, I want to bear your... Your grandfather's name. He said, that's good. He said, go ahead. Then I went to my big aunties. You know, because you, before you can do things like this, you've got to consult the elders. <laughs> I went to, you know, two of my big aunties that I know that they're Christians, you know. They're always praying. And they said to me, you know, you're doing the right thing. But it's going to be a challenge. But you can go ahead. And I went to the newspaper. I made it legal. I changed my son's name. To my gra my great my great grandfather no, to my grandfather's name it it looks like well what's there in the change of name but I tell you friends my life start begin to change of course there were still battles but I could see a change you know what I I, I removed myself under the covering under the spirit amen of that water goddess They talk about spiritual things. You'll be fighting battles you don't know the origin. And you'll be wondering why you're failing. Every time where things are not working out for you. You see, we don't hear things like that again. The fact that people don't talk about it doesn't mean that they're not there and they're not real. Spiritual things, amen, work their spiritual laws. If you want to break the hold of spiritual things in your life, you have to change the law. You have to change the system. You have to come out. God brought the children of Israel out of the land of bondage. He took them out of Egypt. Taking, taking Egypt out of them is a different thing. But at least he took them out of Egypt. Are you getting this? Taking Egypt out of them, that's a different ballgame. But he took them out of Egypt. Sometimes the Lord will take you. You know, Coming out of Egypt means severing amen, your connection. And one thing that connects us most time, amen, to a place, to a people, is the name. Name is a bridge. Name bridges life, spirits. <laughs> I've seen the power of name. Name bearing. Why did they give Jesus? Why did they give Jesus a name? Why did Gabriel have to bring? He said, his name shall be called. Why is it that when John the Baptist was to be born, amen, and his father wanted to name him Zachariah, and they said, not so. His mother wanted to name Zachariah. He said, not so. They said, what do you mean? <laughs> Elizabeth said, his name will be called John. They said, but there's nobody that bears the name John in your family. What kind of a name is this? Nobody bears such a name. We're dealing with something here this morning because if we want to transit, we have to believe the Lord, amen, to re-examine our life. We have to, really, listen, this, de this, this depends on your life. I'm talking about who you are, not what, not what society says you are, not what your extended family says you are. You have to know, you have to define, new beginnings start, amen, with you. Like I said, the battle most time is not just an external thing, it is how you see yourself. If you live under a name that expresses pride, you will exhibit pride. You will exhibit pride. His name shall not be called Zachariah. Not so. His name is John. So they went to <laughs> Zachariah who could not speak till this point. They said, what, what are you going to name this boy? He wrote it on the ground. His name will be called John. They said, wow. What, 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 what kind of a thing is this? <laughs> <laughs> you understand? He confirmed what the wife knew. Why? Because the Spirit of God had already given a name. Listen to this. Your name speaks deep into your prophetic amen, posture and condition. Some of the things amen, that we are going to be doing in this last day will be invoked through the power of the name that heaven has given to us. Do you know that heaven gives us name? I'm talking about moving from Abraham to Abraham 
Why? Because it's not just about the power of covenant. It's not just about God cutting covenant with Abraham. It's about God establishing a principle in the earth that those that will dominate, those that will take over, those that will rule the earth, hallelujah, will be those that have been so named by heaven. His name shall be called Emmanuel. God with us. Every name carries a meaning. The meaning invokes a value. The value defines how far you're going to go. Are you picking this, friends? We're talking about the concept of coming out of the ark. We're dealing with, amen, the concept of new beginning. Establishing, amen, the, the, the principles, the values of God in the earth. This is it. Let me go back to Genesis uh, 11 again. Let's read 31. Yes, we finished, we finished 30. The Bible says, and Sarah was barren and she had no children. Terah took, his, Terah took his son, Abram, his grandson, Lot, son of Aaron, and his daughter-in-law, Sarah, is the wife of his son, Abraham. And together they set out from the land of all the Chaldeans to go to Cana. I love that. Listen to this. But when they came to Aaron, they settled there. <laughs> when they came to Aaron, they settled there. Where, 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 did, where was their journey? Where was the, the, the destination of their journey? Cana. Terah has set out to go to where? To the land of Cana. Cana ought to be their destination. It seemed that God somehow spoke to a man, Terah. The next place I want you, amen, I, I, I'm pointing you to, I'm leading you to, the next place of my move, the next place that I'm going to be establishing my voice from in the earth is going to be the land of Cana. Terah picked it as a, as a signal, as a prophetic signal, and they set out. But remember the scripture said, amen, that is, let me go back to, let me go back to, you're going to pick something here. Let me go back to verse 27. Of uh, Genesis 11, the Bible says this is the account of Terah. Terah became the father of Abram, Nahor, and Aaron. Aaron became the father of Lot. While his father Terah was alive, Aaron died. Aaron died. Listen to this. As they were journeying, as they were journeying to the land of Cana, to the land of the promise. Cana has always been the land of the promise. Ever before the children of Israel were in bondage. Ever before, hallelujah, Abraham, excuse me, ever before, you know, uh, Joseph went to, you know, to the land of Egypt. Ever before Jacob came, amen, with the 70, amen, to the land of Egypt. Ever before the people of God were kept in bondage to the point that they spent 430 years. Ever before that, God had already given a word. Cana is a land of the promise. Oh, I'm picking something in the spirit. But the scripture said, Terah in his journey with his, with his son, Amen. His son, son, and the daughter. The scripture said, when they got to where? When they got to the land of his son. Remember, Terah, excuse me, Aaron was one amen, of the son. He died. Terah, excuse me, Aaron was a father of who? Of Lot. The Bible says he died. In other words, back in those days, when, when you grow up, when you become a son, when you grow up, the first thing they give to you is a land. You, you go and take your own land. You go to your place. You, go, you establish yourself. You, you know, God help, God help our people today. Let me not even go into all of that now because I'll be, I'll be, I'll be distracted. Let me go back to this point that I, I want to establish. But this is very important. The scripture said that as they were journeying to us. Let me read it again. When they came to Aaron, they settled there. Terah settled. He could no longer journey. When he got to amen, the, the land of his son, as they were journeying, they were moving, they left amen, all the land of Chaldea, and they were, they were going with Abraham. Amen. They were going. Abraham, Lot, and his wife, as they were moving towards where? Where were they going? 
Where were they going, friends? Come on, repeat it after me. <laughs> they were going to Cana. But when they got to where? When they got to Aaron. Aaron, remember, back in those days, the name you bear becomes the name of the land. That's why I told you earlier on that your name reflects something. Your name is your inheritance. Your name is your heritage. Your name defines a place. They got to a place called Aaron. Aaron is the name of his son. Terah could not journey further. He was overwhelmed. He was overwhelmed by emotion. He was captured by the death of his son. He could no longer journey further. The Bible says he settled. He settled in, a, in the land. I'm sure by now you're picking. You're picking. There are certain things that we ought to pass. Certain people that we ought to pass. But when we, when we get to you know their 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 junction when we got when we get to their place when we get to their location because of the connection the emotional connection sometimes is a spiritual connection but this connection is has become stale it's become a past thing they're dead ah. Those things are dead, but they are not dead in our life. We have not let we have not learned to let go. We have not learned to thank you, Father. I know you're speaking to me, but you're also speaking to my brethren. This is a this is a message for the church globally. This is a message for the body of Christ. It is a prophetic word of God upon your life to go to the land of Cana, and you're carrying you're carrying the destiny of of you know of your own son, Amen. Your your your, your daughter in law, you understand? You're carrying the destiny of other people, but you have come to settle in a place that you can't pass by, that you can't stay there and say, "Well, this is the land of my son." Aaron, but you're dead. I've got to move on. You cannot move on. Certain people will never move on from certain places. The loss, the loss of loved ones. Maybe it was their son that died, their daughter that died. But they cannot move on. And the enemy had now used the, the lust of that, of that child, of that person. Maybe it's, it's even a divorce. But they cannot move on. They cannot just move on. Every time they get to the land of Aaron, there's a bondage, there's a weight that keeps there. Oh Lord, speak to me. Speak to your church. They cannot move on. They get captured. Listen friends, I'm saying something that is very prophetic. I hope Sister Tina is watching this because I can pick her in, the, you know, in my radar here. The scripture said, that Terah settled in Aaron, the land of his son. Not like he didn't have the capacity, not like he did not have the grace to move on to Cana, but his emotion, the emotion of the, the loss of a child. I think the message is, I, I think I've, pro, I've declared that what God wants us to hear this morning. Have hit the heat? Have hit the, the nail on the head? The lust of his son will not allow him. The lust of that church, the lust of that ministry, the lust of whatever it is, maybe your father, your mother, the lust of that loved one, the lust of that thing, that, that thing you worked for, you did, you, 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 you struggle for, you finally got it, but you, you lost it. Such a thing can, de can deprive you of stepping into your prophetic season, the prophetic new day of God over your life. Many of us are defeated emotionally and psychologically. The things that was taken from us had kept us in an, in, in an invisible prison that we cannot go further. Is there in your mind 10 years after you're still processing that thing 20 years after 
I know what I'm talking about because I, 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 lost, I lost a loved one in my life. I told you about my, the pain of how I lost my father. I mean, I, I, I grew up not knowing my father, basically. Because they told me my father was dead while he was still alive. By the time I finally got to know my father and was trying to, you know, uh, 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 we get, trying to get to know each other, he lost his sight. But not only did he lose his sight, some years later, he died. I was just getting to know. I was just getting to have, you know, it's better you don't even have a father than to go through all of that. It's like, you know, something was given to you and suddenly it was taken from you. This was my life. And guess what? I grew up, you know, with, with that, con that consciousness that I don't have a father. Suddenly, there's a father. And why you're just getting to open up. Remember the things, the things, the things of, hum of humans or a, a process. You don't just wake up in the morning, fall in love. If you wake up in the morning, fall in love, you're going to fall out of the love. Love grows in us. Love grows in us. So imagine you just grow into love. Just while you, <laughs> then the love is gone. These are the things that destroy humans. Then they come to a wrong conclusion. Life is not worth living. It'll take my life. We've got to teach the young people growing up in this brand new day how to handle pressure, how to handle adversity. We've got to teach them. Hey, teach your children how to sing the songs of the bow. That's why David is not just a man after God's heart. He knew how to deal with adversity. Every one of us must know how to, particularly in this season, there will be things that God will be severing from you. You've got to let it go. You've got to let it go. If you've got to move into this new thing, if you've got to move into this new day, if you're going to enter into Cana, the land of milk and honey, if you're going to enter into Zion, the place where perfected beauty is waiting, if you're going to come into the company of the firstborn church, if you're going to come into the assembly of the perfected ones, you have to break away from the past, from the things that are dead. Apostle Godfrey, I hope you're listening to me. Got to break away. Brother Steve, I hope you're watching, you're listening to me. Sister Diony, Brother Derek, I hope guys are listening to me. Let this word sink deep into your spirit. You've got to break away. It's not an easy thing to break away from your past. To break away, particularly when that past amen, has an emotional connection. And when, when, if you don't break that cord, that umbilical cord, if you don't break, you will, you will, you will die amen, in soul ties. Soul ties to the things that are dead. But you have not allowed them to, to be severed. Dead things that are not severe from us will begin to stink around us to the point that people will begin to assume that we are dead also. I know it's not an easy thing to let go. But if you're going to go on with God, if we're going to move on with God, if our nation is going to move on with God, if South Africa is going to move on with God, we've got to let go and stop living in, in the shadows of apartheid. It's time for a new generation to rise up and begin to see the future. I said this some time ago. It is weak leaders that are always blaming the past. It is weak people that are always blaming the past. We all have a past. And the past, in most cases, are painful. But guess what? We cannot step into a new day if we don't know how to break away from the past. Terror! Laba Shayanda. Terror! Could not, his feet could no longer journey further. I'm talking about the concept of Abraham in, in progressing into the new day. When God was done with the generation hallelujah, of Noah, God began. He looked for another man in the earth that he can walk with. Whenever God wants to move in the earth, he's always looking for a people. He looked for a family. He looked for a people. He searched and he... Listen, Abraham was not the first point of call. Terror was. Terror was the first point of call to go to the land of Canaan. It was not Abraham. It was when God realized that terror can no longer move on. Amen, Brother Steve. Thank you. It was when God realized that 
terror could no longer. The, you see, there are certain things our fathers can no longer do. Aye. I salute every father out there. I salute the, those that heaven has called. Those that God has given grace. Those that have built for us a footing and a foundation. That have built things for us all over our nation. All across the land. I celebrate them. And I can begin to call out names. Idaosa. Karen Hagen. Alice. Those are the fathers that we grew up to know. And there are so many. Maurice Sorolo. Many. Maurice Sorolo not too long ago passed away. I salute them. And fathers are not just men. You know, you, you look at somebody like, you know, uh, 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 um, I mean, you know, this lady, Barbara Allen. These are women that they've done things in the, in the positions of fathers. I hope you understand when we talk about fathers, we're not talking about gender here. We're talking about those who carry the grace and the spirit to birth things in the earth and to lead us further. There are many, many men and women who have, who have, who have done great things. And I will not dare downplay their values. I will not dare, not, I will never dare. We honor them. But many of them have died in Aaron. This is a prophetic word to my generation. They cannot move on again to Cana. They've built big things. They've established big things. But they have no sense of resolve to rise up, to step into the third day. They have come to accept their lot. This is where I'm going to die and this is where I'm going to be buried. Their priesthood has ceased in the earth. When a priesthood sees, you don't want to hang around it. You've got to honor it. You've got to celebrate it. But you must move on. It's not an easy thing to begin to chart a new path. Particularly a path that your father cannot see. When God said he's going to do a new thing. This is what it means. It's pouring down as I'm speaking now. It's, it's raining. It's like God is just sanctioning his word with this rain. Thank you, Father. I, I feel something as we touch this point. I feel something in my spirit. Just leap for joy. And of course with burden at the same time. Friends, what we're, what we're touching now will steer emotions. Some of you, maybe you're weeping, you're crying, I don't know. But this is the word of the Lord. This is the voice of God. And so if we make the mistake to stay too long in terror, we will begin to lose the vision of Cana. If we make the mistake to stay with our father in terror, excuse me, we, you know, in Aaron, we will, we will make the mistake, we will, excuse me, we will lose the vision of, of what God wants to do. Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, son of Aaron, and his daughter-in-law, Sarah, the wife of his son Abram. And together they set out from the awe of Chaldean to go to Cana. Don't let the vision die. Don't settle for Aran, for the place of the dead. Aran is the place of the dead. Yes, 
Around might be part of your life, but that thing is dead. That person is dead. That condition is dead. That situation is dead. God said, I'm doing a new thing. It's springing forth. As come, you better keep the light. The scripture says, they settled. They set out, excuse me, they set out for Canaan, but when they came to Aram, they settled there. They settled there. They settled there. Let me read verse 33. Excuse me, 32. Terah lived 200, 205 years and he died in Aram. He did not die in the place he has set out as a vision. He died in Aram. The Lord said to Abraham, you see, it's a flaw. Back in those days, there's no chapter. It's a flow. It's one word flowing. <laughs> Remove the chapter. It's still a continuation. It's still a continuation of the speakings of God. The Lord said to Abram, Leave your country. <laughs> Leave your country, your people, your father's household, and go to the land. I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. Amen. I will bless those who bless you. The land that God was going to show him, even though God, not, God did not tell him at the initial, we, of course, we later understood that that land was where? Cana, yes. It was the land of Cana. In fact, when Abraham finally got to Cana, the Bible says he set his eyes on a city whose builder and maker is God. Because Cana was a prototype, was a shadow of a man, that, that which is to come. Abraham continued where his father could not reach. As I round up this morning, I want to encourage you, friends. Let the faith of Abraham rise in us. The faith of Abraham is the faith of new beginning. The faith of Abraham is a, is a faith of God kickstarting his promise again. The journey began with Terah, his father. But Terah died in Aaron. He settled in, he just settled there. It was overwhelmed. When you look at things, when you look at things around you, are you overwhelmed to the point that what you're seeing is clouding the vision of Cana. This is a word for you. It's a word for me personally. It's a word for the body of Christ. It's a word for this nation. It's a word for our generation. Those who are going to leave the land of Chaldean and move beyond Aaron to the place called the land of Cana will be those who have made this resolve in their heart that they will not allow what they have lost or what they will be losing to stop them from what God has called them to gain. We honor you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the fresh word that you are giving to us. These are words that only the mature can pick. I stand in awe of you, O oh Father. I rejoice in such a word. Every day is fresh. It's like you just have something new. And I know, Father, that even though I feel so unworthy to bring this kind of word, I stand in awe of you. I am, I am shocked and surprised with the things coming out. But it's because you need a mouthpiece to speak to your church, to your people. What a word of hope. What a word of encouragement. What a word what a word of life. I want to engage you at this point. There are things in our life that we need to let go of. 
And it's not going to be easy. There are people in our life that have become dead weights. Dead weight. The Bible says we must let go of every weight and sin. The weight and sin. You see. It's not just about sin. There are certain things. They may not necessarily be sin, but they are weight. Say, you say you've got to let go of every weight and sin. So the weight is not the sin, but the weight is not supposed to be in our life. We are attached to those weights. We can't travel light. We can't climb the hill of the Lord because they become weights in our life. Emotions. Wrong expectation. You know, this morning I was thinking about, when I was thinking about this message, I was just, you know, thinking about it. And, you know, sometimes we get disappointed because we expect certain things from, you know, certain people. That's just who we are as humans. Every human being have some sense of expectation. And you may be expecting people to do certain things. Maybe for you. Or for your family, ministry, or whatever. And they fail you. And most of them, not because they want to fail you, but because they themselves are not aware of what is expected of them. So how do you expect, how do you, how do you place hope or expectation on people that are not even aware of their sense of, sense of you know, a, 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 a commitment or sense of you know, a, a involvement or grace or gift to you, towards you? You, 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 I, this is just something God was dropping in my spirit. Of course, this is how God speaks to me. Because, you know, I, I like to understand people. I, I, I'm a man of people. I'm sent to people. So I've got to understand people. And you find yourself maybe sometimes get even angry with them. But you don't need to because those people are not even expecting. They're, they're, they're not in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the mindset of doing something or giving something or, you know, contributing something to us, the advancement of whatever it is. They're not even aware of it. You can only expect from people that are aware, amen, of their responsibility, commitment, amen, or involvement in a relationship. If, if for example, if your wife, amen, does not have the understanding of certain position as a wife or husband, how do you expect her to respond or him to respond regarding what you're expecting? You see, we, 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 we demand expectation based on assumption. And this is where our Lord showed us a principle. Father, forgive them for they do not know. He wasn't expecting them to save him because he knew amen, that they have been what captured in blindness. They have been captured in darkness. So how do you expect light from a people who are in darkness? How do you expect love from people who do not have a sense of love for themselves? How do you expect them to give you love? That's the point that I'm making. So the problem is not them. The problem is you. When you place hope on people that don't even know that they have amen, the grace to, to extend hope. I mean, you, 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 you should be blaming yourself for, for you know, for Placing wrong expectation. You should expect things from people that you know have that sense of maturity, that sense of grace, amen, to reach out, that sense of, I mean, if you want to, if you want to receive counsel, you don't go to counsel, you don't go to people to get counsel, you know, from people who, who you know better than. That's the point I'm making. You go to people who know better than you. You approach people you believe who know better than you. Not, not like if any other person comes into your life and give you counsel, you won't take it. Of course, you will take counsel from anybody. But if you're expecting counsel, you're expecting counsel from somebody, amen, who is 10 times better than you. That's the point that I'm making. So if we don't have that kind of understanding, we will be making mistakes and we'll be, you know, creating all kinds of sorrow. And sometimes we expect certain people to know certain things. But unfortunately, they don't know it. And that's also when you take people on a face value. If you, if, you, if you make decisions and you connect to people based on face value, you'll be making a wrong because you really don't, you, you don't have insight into what those people amen, are going through. So don't, don't come to a wrong conclusion. Don't jump to a conclusion. That's why our expectation must always be from the Lord. 
And that's the point. That's a place that I have always sought to stand from and relate. My expectation is of the Lord. I want to encourage you this morning, friends. Whatever it is, whoever it is in your life that needs to be let go. You got to let them go. Or else they become a burden and a weight that keeps you in Aaron. And you never get to move to Cana, the land of the promise. What a word heaven has given to us this morning. What a way God amen, has spoken to us this morning. What an expression. What an impact. We thank you, Father. As we receive this word, we receive it on behalf of this nation, South Africa. And on behalf of the continent of Africa. Because there's a lot of things that has happened in the past over this nation, over our continent, that we need to move on from. We need to break away from so we can enter this new reality of this new day. So, Father, as you speak to us, we respond in obedience. We know, God, that, yes, there's going to be war and battles and challenges in our minds because when we're used to certain things, we develop false false expectation and false sense of security. Man don't want to be insecure. But our insecurity speaks deep into the state of our lives. And that's what you want to deal with. They set out for Cana. They got to Aaron. They settled there. And Terah died there. Hundred and five years. And your word came to his son, Abraham. He had to carry the bag of the journey. And you said to him, leave. It's like you were dealing with something that connected to his father. It's like you were healing Abraham. You are breaking, yes, you are breaking something from Abraham that was connected to, to Terah, his father. Leave your father's house. Leave your country. Leave Aaron because they settled in Aaron. So God said, I don't want you, Abraham, to remain in Aaron. Aaron is your brother. He's dead. But you've got to move on. I've got something bigger for you. It's a land that I want to show you. And we thank God that Abraham responded. Faith always responds in obedience. Father, we thank you this day. May this word sink into every aspect every fiber of our being may we be processed whatever we must go through we need to go through it but we refuse to remain in Aaron we, re we refuse to live under the shadow of terror our father we are Abraham we break away we're coming to the place of the new covenant he said in blessing I will bless you father we thank you we bless your holy name for your word, for your spirit and grace that is outpoured upon our life. We know that we are not alone because you promised Abraham you will be with him. He said, those who bless you, I will bless. Those who curse you, I will curse. So we thank you that this day, Father, we receive grace to move on to the place of your good pleasure. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, the Lord has surprised us again. What a word. What a prophetic declaration. What a prophetic instruction. We want to thank God for this brand new day again. Please, I beg of you, share this message to as many as you can. You can, you can, you can share. Right? Just sh keep sharing. Just connect. Just make sure that people amen, get hold of this word. We want, amen, the body of Christ to come into truth, to come into freedom, to come into liberty. And this is why God, I believe, has spoken this kind of word. This is not something I prepared in my mind. Yes, I knew God is speaking to us about Abraham. But, I mean, I wasn't thinking of terror, you know, as, as, the, as the main message. But what a word this morning. Thank you, everyone. May the Lord continue to empower you. May he continue to grace you. May he continue to bless you. May his spirit continue to lead you. May you continue to apply this principle that you have heard. May you continue to journey 
to the place of the good pleasure of the Father. God bless you. Have yourself a wonderful, blessed morning. Well, it's still morning. The day is still very young. Um, it's, it's raining here, but uh, we thank God. We give praise to God. Wherever you're watching from, wherever you'll be listening and watching or be listening to the audio from, may God continue to expand this truth in your heart. You want to later on download the audio and listen to it again and again and again until the word expand and permeate every part of your being. May faith rise in your heart to advance to the land of his promise. Thank you so much to Sister Dioni, Brother Derek, or Sister um, Stan Kumisa, and of course, uh, our Brother Stephen. Thank you for joining. Uh, any other person out there this morning, wherever you are, if you're joining us, thank you so much. If you have joined us to listen, oh, thank you, my dear brother. Some fun. Amen. Baba Tune, thank you, Apostle, Bishop. Oh, you are the one. <laughs> thank you, my dear friend. Nice to have you join this morning. All right. Only God knows where you are <laughs> today. I don't know if you're in Canada, you're in America, or you are. God knows where. You are like a man that is carried around by the wind. God bless you. Nice to have you join this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Apostle Godfrey. Nice to have you join us too. Thank you. God bless you, sir. All right. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have yourself a blessed morning. And of course, if you want to, uh, you know, share something with me along what you've received this morning, please, I'll be more than uh, uh, willing to, to hear and share the testimony, whatever it is. God bless you. Make sure amen, you enjoy your, your day. God bless you. Bye-bye.